In this tutorial we're going to cover the curve editor, which is this section here. The curve editor is where you can see and manipulate animation data. To see anything in the curve editor, you need to have a node panel open that contains animation data. So let's do that. Now you can see, as I scrub through the timeline, the value changes over here in the node panel. And that is represented by the animation curves over here. If you collapse the panel, the curves will disappear. And if you close the panel, the curves will disappear. So now we need to double click that node to reload the curves. This left column lets you pick what curves to display. Clicking on the node name will display all the curves for that node. Clicking on the knob name will show all the curves for that knob. In this case, X and Y. Clicking on the sub knob will show only that curve. Clicking on this gray empty space will display nothing. The vertical or Y axis denotes the value of the parameter. The horizontal or X axis denotes time measured in frames. This yellow line indicates current frame. Navigation is the same as everywhere else in Nuke. That's Alt and drag to pan. Alt and middle mouse button is zoom. A diagonal drag will give you a uniform zoom and a horizontal drag a horizontal zoom and a vertical drag a vertical zoom. You also have the region zoom which is middle mouse button drag without a modifier key and it will zoom into that region. There are also two hotkeys a, which will show all the curves in the graph, and then if we select a point and hit F, we will zoom into that selected point. And now I'm going to hit A again. I can add a point by clicking down on the curve while holding Command and Alt. A point can be moved by selecting it and then dragging. The move is constrained to the first axis that I choose. If I move the point vertically, it's constrained to the Y axis, and I can't move it horizontally. Now if I click away, and then drag along the x-axis, the move is constrained to that axis. Holding down the command key disables this behaviour and allows me to move the point freely. Clicking and dragging will also move the tangents. Holding command will allow me to scale the slopes independently. To change the values numerically, click on the number and the numeric field will pop up. Now I can type in a new value. So let's change this to 152. This needs to be confirmed with either return or enter. I can also change the slope value numerically by clicking on the value. This time, instead of typing, I will use the virtual slider. I'm going to highlight the value I wish to change and hold down the Alt key and drag to the left for lower and the right for higher. But let's say I'm not happy with this new value, so I'm going to click away without pressing enter and the change is cancelled. I can also draw the animation curve. The curve needs to be selected by clicking on the curve. Hold down command, alt and shift and now I can draw. This is quite handy to create camera shake as it gives you an organic animation. Notice all the selected points have this bounding box surrounding them and this will be the case when two or more points are selected. The bounding box will allow me to move multiple points by dragging the bounding box with this crosshair. The cursor changes to indicate what move to expect. Click in the centre and you can move freely. Click on the vertical axis for a constrained vertical movement and click on the horizontal axis to constrain the move horizontally. The bounding box also allows you to scale the points. Drag the top of the box for vertical scale and the side of the box for horizontal scale. Drag from the corner to scale both at the same time, but note it's not constrained to a uniform scale. If I wanted to scale from here I would need to hide the points as I keep selecting them as the cursor indicates. And this is done by holding down Command and Shift. Now the points are hidden and I can get to the corner I want. Let's click in the empty grey space so none of the curves are visible. Now click X to load that curve. Select the curve by clicking on it and the knob name will appear here, which will reflect Translate X from Transform 1. And we get the word Curve in the expression field. The expression field will return curve if it's a keyframed animation, like this one. We can alter or override the animation by typing an expression into this field. So if I type plus 10, you can see now that the old keyframe animation is displayed with a dotted curve to indicate its dormant state, and there is a new solid line without any points. This is the curve the knob will use. You will also notice that the update is live, so if I delete the zero, the new curve is at plus 1. Or if I type 30, it adjusts as I type. But this expression field is always single line. The expression field is the same as clicking in here. So edit expressions, and now 
If I change this here to 45, you can see that the result changes but the curve does not update until I hit OK. That's because this is a modal dialog box. I would also not be able to copy and paste any values outside of the box. Now I hit OK and the curve updates. If I had chosen the edit expressions from the animation knob, which is this squiggly line here, I'd get to see all the values for this translate knob, so X and Y, rather than just X. If I need to compare expressions over several nodes, I would need to use the right click menu. So let's invoke a new node, another transform, that's hotkey T. Add some keys on this centre knob. Now if I press A to view all curves, then right click and choose edit expressions, I get this dialog box, which is allowing me to see translate X and centre X and centre Y. These knobs are from two separate nodes, so that way I can compare and alter expressions over two separate nodes.